I should take this off because this is another brand. <laughs> this is one of my favorite knives. Whoa. Brad actually gave me this knife. I, um, I have a lot of knives. Like I have like kind of a, a shocking number of knives. You know, I've just kind of acquired them over the years. This is a, um, a Bob Kramer for Zwilling um, knife. It's an eight inch chef knife from his Meiji line. It's like very fine grained um, stainless steel. I got to go um, visit Bob's studio with Brad for an episode of It's Alive. Oh, it's magnetic oh, in there. Oh, 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 where'd he come from? Little stowaway. Um, I worked with Bob on sharpening this knife, had a chance to talk to him about his knives. It's also like, it's very lively. You hear that ting, ting, ting? Like, that's like what I love. You getting that on the audio? Like, that provides like a really nice feedback between like what's happening under the blade and like your hand. This to me is just an all around great knife. Um, not too much rock to it, but it has a little bit of rock in that belly there. Um, I'm more of like kind of like a push cutter. So um, it just gives me like a nice smooth motion. And when this thing is sharp, it's sharp. I sharpened this, yeah, a few weeks ago and you know, we still, we got hairs. A lot of it is like, honestly, in like the details, like that's the difference between like, you know, a $150 knife and a $350 knife. The fact that this is all rounded and sanded and polished so that it's smooth, the top, is totally rounded and smooth. The transitions are totally beautiful and perfect. You know, where the handle is stepped in and where it meets the blade, all of that is like very well thought about. Even though the handle sort of seems a little bit long, it's wood, um, it's like a synthetic wood. And, um, you know, honestly, it's like a very beautifully balanced knife. This is not a particularly heavy knife. Um, I have lighter knives, but this is, you know, this is not like some cleaver. Yeah, this is one of my favorite knives. It's a, um, a gentleman out of Los Angeles, Fell Knives, made it with me. And uh, it's just a profile based off of a different knife I've been using for a long time. And he kind of just brought it to the next level. Nice high carbon. Uh, but I like it because it's big, but it also, it also has like a nice little lively edge. You know, it's not like a cleaver. It's like you can use it. I'm not going to go splitting pig heads with it, although it could probably really take a beating. Um, but I like, it's like a workhorse, but it can also be used like a scalpel. Cool. I mean, it's easy to, to, to travel with. This, a paring knife and a bread knife, it's really all you need. It does have a rather long handle. I mean, I got a pretty big mitt. It's got a pretty nice handle. And it's really important to me that all the edges, especially where you're gonna be holding and cutting, up here, in here, they're all rounded and polished real smooth. Because when those are left just straight 90 degree angle edges, I mean, any chef or who's someone who's been cooking for a long time, you get a new knife or a knife that isn't polished and rounded off like that, and you start cutting for a couple hours, you get little blisters and you get little marks, and you know, over time they turn into calluses, but it can be avoided with just a nice little, little details like that. High carbon, so you get that patina, it will rust on you, but it also just gets a wicked edge. Um, it probably will just take the hair right off. Whoa. All right. Little shave job, huh? I'm not the best chopper. My culinary skills lie elsewhere, I would say. So when I'm looking for a knife, I'm looking for something that is not too big of a boy, that I'll feel like I can handle, it's not unwieldy. I'm a left-handed chef. A lot of the grips on knives are built for righties. This one doesn't have any of those grips. This is the Zwilling J.A. Henkel's Pro Freuder Ice Hardened No Stain Knife. Um, and it doesn't have any grooves, so as a lefty, I feel really comfortable. It's not too big. I feel a certain level of control when I'm chopping. I, I love this knife. It works great. Seven inches. Not too big, not too small. Sometimes in the test kitchen, they hand me these knives that are this big. It's like you're handing me like a sword to cut like a small piece of cheese. I like one that I don't have to sharpen very often. I'm not someone who is religiously sharpening my knives, like Andy Baragani over here. And I found what I really like about this one is that it doesn't lose its edge. 
it stays pretty sharp. I think I've had this knife for four years and I've only had to sharpen it a few times and it kind of always feels pretty smooth. It never feels like it's going super dull, which is really nice. Okay, this is um, a utility knife. It's a six inch knife. Uh, it's by a company named US Knife Works. Brad actually gave me this knife. He gave me this one because he said it was my size. <laughs> I love the handle. It's a blade that inside has the same steel. That is what they use for military stuff. So this is like a really, really well done knife. It has like great balance. That means that when you hold it in your hand, you know, it has even, even weight in both sides. I have a lot of knives at home. I have like from paring knives, from chef knives, um, cleavers. This one is my to-go every day, chopping a little salad, chopping a little garlic, peeling something. I think that's why it's called utility knife, because it has too many uses. Utilities, is that a word? <laughs> All right, the way I grab a knife, uh, or the way I was taught of how to grab a knife, and the way I teach, usually when I teach children is, you should have your index and your um, thumb on the blade, blade here and your other three fingers here holding the handle. So because this is what is going to hold the whole knife and this is what's going to guide it. This is not the biggest knife in my toolkit, but it is one of my favorites. It's a Mac five and a half inch approximately utility knife. And what I really like about this knife is the shape. So unlike your standard um, German or like French style, very bowed chef's knife, it is almost straight like a slicer. It really mimics the shape of my favorite slicing knife. And I have small hands. So actually a, a knife in this size, five to six inches, is like great. It puts me up really close to the ingredient that I'm working with. It's great for prepping vegetables, chopping vegetables, but it's also like thin enough and nimble enough. I would totally um, butcher a chicken with this. I would cut fish into fillets. I would trim scallops. I would do a lot of things. Um, it's just a great all-purpose utility knife that feels great in my hand. So I think the three knives that everybody should have are like a long slicing or chef's knife, a somewhere in a utility or pairing knife and then a serrated knife. So for me, this is doing double duty as my pairing knife and my little veg prep knife. Okay, so this right now is my favorite knife. It's a petty knife from New West Knife Works. And it, you know, it's about, it's got about a five inch long blade. So it's a little bigger than a paring knife and definitely shorter than a chef's knife. I used to be the kind of person who insisted on doing everything with a chef's knife. But at this point, I really, um, I, I grab this a lot for kind of more delicate knife work. It's got this kind of short blade. It's nice and narrow. It's really sharp and has this long handle, which kind of gives me a lot of control and it's really balanced. It's great for getting in and kind of like, you know, coring a head of cauliflower, or just I'll have it in my hand when I'm picking herbs just to kind of make that process easier. I find myself kind of rarely reaching for a chef's knife at this point. This is the one that I grab most often, and the one that I travel with, like, I can just put it in this little, this handy dandy little sheath, throw it in my tote bag if I'm going away for the weekend and I know my friends are gonna have really bad knives or whatever, um, but don't wanna seem like, you know, a total, like, nerd and bring a whole knife kit. This is the one that I travel with. This can kind of do almost everything that I need. This is one of my favorite knives. It is not my favorite knife because my favorite knife is a chef's knife because I find it the most useful. But second best is this knife, which is a tomato knife. So it's serrated on one edge and then it's forked on the tip and I'll show you how you use it. You can make super thin slices and then the best part is this is used to pick the slices up and move them. So you just fork them and move them over without getting all slippery and sloppery. I think the holes in the knife are here so that the tomato slices don't stick to the side of the knife. And then I also use this for things like soft rolls or softer breads where it can stand in for a serrated knife. And it's also great for cheese, for cheese plates. 
So this is my favorite knife, but I will say it's probably the knife that I, I definitely do not use the most compared to a chef's knife. Uh, I'm gonna have a little Kill Bill moment. Lucy Lou, if you remember that. It's small but mighty. mighty. Uh, it's a Japanese bony knife. Bony knife is usually when you're trying to remove, uh, separate the flesh from the bones of an animal. Uh, I would use this mostly for lamb, chicken, pork, beef. I wouldn't use this. Uh, you could use this on fish, but I, I would. It's a, it's a carbon steel. It's uh, the way you sharpen this is in a 50/50 blade, meaning that you can't, you don't sharpen the sides uh, equal amounts. With this, it's 70/30, so it's a little bit uh, of a different ratio. Yeah, it's just so badass. But I think if you're a home cook, I would definitely have the chefs, the um, the parry knife and a bread knife. I doubt most people are breaking down uh, big pieces of meat, but if you want to, then I would go with a bony knife. Yeah, it's just so badass. My boyfriend was like, why do you need to bring the knife to the test kitchen? You all gonna just like, I don't even need some really dark joke. I'm not gonna say. He was like, you're all gonna stab each other? I was like, no, it's just, anyways.